Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Starry Log Cabin. It's made with a jelly roll, and we've got these new ones from Hoffman. This one is called Daybreak. It's got a lot of nice colors in it, and that will do all of the patchwork that you see here, including these little pinwheels. And the only other thing we need is a border. The pattern we're making today is one that I wrote, so it's available for free. You can click the link right below this video that says free pattern, and then you can view it or you can print it off. If you're going to make this, I would recommend doing that because that way you won't make any mistakes. The first step is to separate your strips into color stacks. We need one stack that has some dark prints, and we need another stack that's pretty light. And then we're going to have some medium tones here in the middle. Now your jelly roll probably won't look like mine, but you can do the same procedure. Get some darks, get some real lights, and then some middle colored tones. I'm going to take six of the lights and I'm going to open them up so they're a single layer. And I'm going to stack them all up and I can cut six layers all at the same time because batiks are pretty thin and easy to cut. We need to make some sub cuts here. We need a 14 and a half, an eight and a half, a couple of four and a halfs, and then four of the two and a halfs. All of those sizes are in the pattern, so you don't have to remember any of them. Those are all cut. The next step is to take six more lights and cut them similar to what we did the first time, but the numbers are slightly different. The last two light strips just get cut into squares. From our dark strips, we're going to take six of them and cut them in these sizes. Then we're going to take six more and cut them in these sizes. That's all the dark pieces. The last thing we need is to cut some medium pieces, and we really only need three strips. We're, gonna, we're going to cut squares. You can get all the pieces you need from just the three strips, but I want to get more variety of color, so I'm going to go ahead and cut up six strips. I'm just going to cut a few from each of those six. All the cutting is done. The next step is to take all of these four and a half inch rectangles and our dark squares, and we're gonna make flying geese units. I like to make flying geese units by drawing on the back side of the dark squares. This is a diagonal line from corner to corner, right along there. And this is just a white chalk pencil. You don't have to have a dark line, just enough so that you can see when you get to the sewing machine to sew right along it. Take your rectangle and one square over on this side with the line angled like that. Line everything up and stitch right along that drawn line. You can tell if it's stitched correctly if when you fold this over right on that stitching line there, if everything lines up here. Mine is pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close there. And that's why I like this method of flying geese because I've got this base here and I know that if that fits, my rectangle will be perfectly shaped. So I just finger pressed this here and now I'm going to cut off the back two layers Otherwise, there's a lot of extra bulk. Now we can take another square and put it on the opposite corner with that line facing that way and stitch again right on your drawn line. Fold it over and check and see if everything meets Looks great. Cut off the back two layers. 
And now we have a nice flying geese unit. The flying geese blocks, those are all done. The next thing we're going to work on is the center of the stars. And we're going to use these medium toned squares for that. Just pick out four different prints here. I'm just gonna try to get four different colors. And we're just putting together a simple four patch like that. I like to put these two right sides together. Stitch down. And I just leave it there. Do the second pair. And now if I press the seam allowance on this bottom one that direction, and the top pair that way, I can put them right sides together, the seam allowances will nest, and the bottom one will be facing down, which helps keep it in place when I stitch this seam here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make one of these for the center of each of the six blocks. Once those are finished, we're ready to make our first star block. Here's what we need. One center, four of the flying geese units, and then four light squares for the corners of the block. These light blocks, they go in all four of the outside corners. Flying geese units, like this. To sew them together, you can either make separate rows and then put the rows together, but I always like to keep things with the strings attached between the blocks. So I'm gonna take these first two pieces and I'm gonna leave it right there. Then I come back and grab the next two and stitch those together. And then the last two from that section. And that helps to keep your pieces in order so you don't get them twisted or mixed up. So I've just opened everything up. I'll slide over a little bit and then we can just grab these in order. That one gets flipped over and sewn here. Flying geese unit next. and the last corner. For the seam allowances, this middle section, this middle section here, they really want to go toward the center. So I'm going to press both of these this way. Then the top and bottom row, they're going to go away from the center. And it's not necessary to iron this here. They finger press very nicely. Now, just two rows here. And the last seam. All we have to do now is finger press these seams away from the center. You really can press it either way. It just seems to want to go away. And the middle of the block is done. Those blocks are all done. And all we have left are a few squares and eight different sizes of strips. So we're gonna take one of the star blocks and then one of these in each size. And I'm gonna pick different colors and then we're gonna take those over to the sewing machine. Let's start with the smallest piece here. This piece is exactly the same size as our block. So all we have to do is stitch it onto one side here. And let's finger press the seam away from the center. And then the next piece is going to go on this side. So we're gonna be 
surrounding this block just like we would normally do with a log cabin where we add pieces onto each side turning it a quarter turn each time as we go so this one goes here The next piece, it's a little bit longer, and it's gonna go right here. So we're going from the smallest piece to the largest piece. They're getting a little bit bigger each time we add one. Now we'll add the next piece. You know it's the right piece. It's exactly the right length. And we will stitch this on, and I'll just keep adding pieces until the block is done. So you'll notice we now have darks on this side and lights on this side. And we're going to add another light here and another light here and darks over there. And that's what we want. That's why we had different lengths of pieces. We want the lights over here and the darks over there. And that is how we will get our log cabin block shaded correctly. And that is the whole log cabin block right there. The Patrick blocks are all done. All we have left are these squares here and these are for half square triangles. To make half square triangles, we're going to mark the back side of the dark squares right along the diagonal there. And I'm just using a white chalk pencil here. Take one light square, one dark square, line them up and stitch a quarter inch away from that line on both sides. And once it's stitched, all you have to do is cut on your drawn line. Since these are pretty little, I can do it right here with my scissors. And then these will get ironed open with that seam towards the dark. After they're ironed, I like to cut off these little extra bits that are called dog ears. That makes sure there's not a lot of extra bulk when we sew our patches together. I'm taking these back to the machine and I'm going to pick out four, four different colors. And we're gonna make a little pinwheel. So let's use that one. And we'll turn that one time, turn it another time, and turn it another time. So we're just gonna sew these four together. The nice thing is, because all the seams are pressed toward the dark, these are going in the opposite direction there. So when I come down here, it's real easy to tell if you've got it matched and it's gonna lay real flat. So this one first, and then this one, finger press the bottom seam that direction and the top seam that way, which is the opposite way and now, again, the seams nest. It's real easy to get them matched. And we're gonna have just a little teeny mini pinwheel. So we need 20 of these for the quilt. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other 19. The pinwheel blocks are all done. And I went ahead and cut out the border pieces that we need. These are five inch wide pieces, 12 and a quarter long, two of them. And these ones are also five inches wide, 14 and three eighths. And while I was cutting that, I also cut some th three and a half inch squares and then I cut them in half. So we're gonna take these and the pinwheel blocks over to the sewing machine. 
take four of these triangles, one of them goes on each side of this block. So what we're doing is we're going to end up with a block, a pinwheel block that's on point. To stitch these on, all you have to do is line up this edge and then line up the tip with that seam right there. Then you know you've got it centered. Stitch it on. And press the seam to the outside. Do that again on the opposite side. And then add these pieces like this. You can still see the point right there. You just put that on the seam and line this up over here. And it doesn't matter if your block isn't perfect because we're gonna trim the edges when we're done. I've got all of the corner triangles on and I did press them a little bit and they need to be trimmed. They need to be trimmed to five inches. So the easiest way to do that is to measure over from that center seam two and a half inches and hold it down over here because it's kind of lumpy because of all the seams. Trim off this side and then just keep spinning it around and trimming off of each side. If you have one of those rotating cutting mats, that would help a little bit, but they don't take very long to trim. We are all ready to lay out the quilt now. And I think I mentioned earlier that we needed, of we needed 20 of these, we actually only need 10. But all that information is in the free pattern. When you lay out your blocks, you've got a couple options. You can lay every block going exactly the same way, like this, on the left and the bottom, or you can turn some of the blocks around, every other block, and then what you get is a pathway of dark there and a couple of light pathways. And I like that layout better myself, but again, you can play around with putting the blocks any way you like. The border pieces and these patchwork pieces, one of these goes everywhere where the blocks come together and in all the corners. And then the border pieces, they're cut to the exact sizes you need. The shorter pieces fit in the middle of each of these long sides. And then the longer pieces that we cut fit everywhere else. It's pretty easy to get the quilt finished now. All I have to do is sew those six blocks together and then I will put the borders on just the way we normally put borders onto a quilt. After that, we'll get it loaded onto the quilting machine. I've got the quilt all loaded up and I have five colors of thread, all of which would look really nice on this quilt. I thought about using blue. We've got blue in a number of the prints. It hardly shows in the light, shows a little bit in the dark. Of course, a light cream will work. That will work on almost any quilt, but I think it's gonna look too much, too stark on the dark colors there. We could go with this brown color. It's a dusty brown. So it's gonna show a little there and not show much here at all. This dusty rose would also show a little bit in the light area, not much in the dark. I think this is the one I'm gonna like the best. It's kind of a warm gold color, but not very dark. Barely shows in the light, shows a little in the dark, but I think it matches the theme of the quilt the best. For the quilting, I really wanted to do something with stars. This is my favorite star quilting pattern because I like the little loops that go between all of them. It gives it a little bit of an abstract look, especially since the stars are not symmetrical and they're different sizes. That should be perfect on this quilt.
I've got the Starry Log Cabin Quilt all done. This is a nice small size. This is a perfect size for a gift or a wall hanging. And a lot of our customers like to make these small quilts. It's very satisfying because you can get it done in a short amount of time. The stars are really popping because I used the darkest pieces around this little bit lighter in the center. So I think it's important to use dark ones here. The quilting is pretty awesome. We've got big stars and little stars, and I like that little bit of swirliness. For the binding, I had a lot of pieces of jelly roll left over. Some were whole, some were part. So I cut them down to 15 inches, stitched them into one big long piece, so I was able to go all the way around the quilt and have a nice blend of the different fabrics for the binding. That's always a fun way to do binding. The backing is just a plain 1895 batik. The thread shows just a little bit and that binding again. Very interesting with the different colors around the edge. This quilt is 41 by 58. It'd be very easy to make it bigger. Just make more blocks and just you could make a queen size, king size, whatever you like. Now, if this pattern looks a little bit familiar, it's because we have done this in a video before, but it was about five years ago. It was very early. It's a little bit hard to watch. Camera's a little shaky and we've gotten a lot better at doing the videos. So we're trying to cycle through some of those older ones and redo them. So if you want to make this quilt, it's a little bit easier for you to get yours done. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We really appreciate the fact that you spend your time with us and we get to share quilting with you. Now, at the end of every video, we like to do a giveaway. Today's giveaway is called Paradise Found. This is a pretty big quilt. It's got a nice big bold star right in the middle of it. This is made with Robert Kaufman fabrics called Brushy. Very interesting patterns in here. It's got a nice swirly quilting design on it and it's very easy to enter the giveaways. All you have to do is click the link right below this video that says giveaway, and you put in your name and your email address, and we can send this to a winner anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.